everyone, Fini here from Fina Reads. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. I read a lot of great books recently, in particular some science fiction that I gave five stars and I want to talk about those with you. And then I saw this concept of mini reviews recently on booktube and I've seen more booktuber picking it up and I thought this is perfect. So here we are mini reviews for three five star science fiction books, all very different from each other, all rather unique. <laughs> so without further ado, let's talk about those. The first book I want to talk about is The Other Welly by Scott Alexander Howard. I hope I got that name right. I keep forgetting the author's name. This was a pick I don't and I don't even know anymore how I heard about that. I think someone mentioned it in passing through on YouTube somewhere and I like the premise of it and then I saw the cover and I was like huh I would have never picked this book up because it totally looks like literary fiction and I don't read literary fiction at all but it is actually a sci-fi with a time travel trope. So let's talk about that. This is about a valley, normal, you know, people, everything is normal except for to the east and west there are borders and if you cross these borders you end up in the same valley but either 20 years in the past or 20 years in the future <laughs> and everybody knows about that. So the people living in the valley are fully aware that they could go left or right and end up in their own past or in their own future. This is all regulated by a government entity that uh, takes requests to, hey, I want to travel to the east or to the west, usually for something like grief, uh, like they lost a loved one and they want to see them one more time, those types of things. But it's all highly regulated because, you know, if you mess with time, things go wrong and everybody knows about that, which I find is such an interesting way of approaching this time travel topic that everybody's aware of that and everybody knows that you don't mess with time. <laughs> and the book is written from the perspective of Odile, who at the beginning of the book is a 16 year old teenager. You get to know her. She is a very shy young woman, um, usually stays to herself. And we are at a time where teenagers in high school are picking uh, their jobs, what they want to do in the future. And she is actually applying for that government entity that takes in those requests and makes decision and approves them or denies them. The story ensues. It is wonderfully written. I listened to it on audiobook and I have to say they picked the perfect narrator for that main character that we are following throughout the book. It's a really great paced series because there's only so much you can tell as the story in such a limited setting, right? Because you're only in that valley. But I thought it was perfectly well paced. It was very well written. Not literary fiction at all, I thought but it is marketed as that. So I'm still surprised about it a little bit. <laughs> Amazing. I highly recommend the audiobook if you're someone who listens to audiobooks. I've read some reviews that said the written book is annoying because the author doesn't use any punctuation for dialogue. So just FYI. Book number two that I want to talk about is more a classic sci-fi and that is Roadside Picnic by the Strugatsky brothers. If you've listened to one or two of my wrap-ups you might have heard me talk about it or gush about it rather but I wanted to give it a somewhat dedicated review as well because I think it is a book that more people should read because even for classic sci-fi I found the premise rather unique. So this book is about Red and essentially his life. So we are following him on different stages in his life. It's kind of separated into three sections and we get three major aspects of his life in these three sections. And Red is a what they call a stalker. So it's someone who goes into the zone, which is not allowed. And this, because the zone is an area where aliens landed at one point on Earth and then disappeared immediately again. And the only thing they left is devastation and an area that is not really safe for humans either. And there are a lot of weird things going on. So Red is going into the zone to get some of these alien artifacts out of the zone and then selling them on the black market. And there's a lot more to it. So it's idea based, which means there's a lot of stuff thrown at you that you just have to deal with. You're thrown into the deep end of the book. You just have to deal with it. And if you do that, you are rewarded with a really fascinating, at times eerie story about uh, first contact <laughs> that is very different 
um, from other books that I've read, especially the way Red and his friends and colleagues and people around him just deal with it. I thought it was very interesting. If you like sci-fi with sociopolitical aspects, this book is great because there are a lot of topics discussed like capitalism, great, that kind of stuff. But even if you're not into that, you can ignore these aspects and still have a very enjoyable story. The last book that I want to talk about is Monster by Duncan Swan, which is a horror sci-fi. So you see, I really picked three books that are all very different from each other. It's kind of a post-apocalyptic book where it's again set on Earth and we get two timelines. One timeline is from the day of the event, which essentially is a, a huge explosion in a Swiss research facility that pours a bunch of smoke up in the air and creates a kind of toxic cloud. The second timeline is 89 days later in the US and we are following a group of people uh, as they deal with the situation where the cloud is now closing in onto the mainland. We are getting a lot of POVs in both timelines from military folks, from the scientists, from just regular people and how they react to the situation. It's very movie-like, very apocalypse-like, very fast-paced and full of action and, you know, things are happening left and right. And as you discover what's actually going on with the cloud, you're like, oh my god, this is movie material. So that's really how I read the book, like watching a big action movie. What I loved about this book in particular is him showing how all of these different people react to a situation like this and how humanity in general reacts to a situation like that immediately after versus 89 days after when they had time to prepare for certain things. Very different, very interesting, um, very realistic, I find. I'm, I can believe that this is exactly how things like this would happen. <laughs> Let's hope something like this never happens because that would be horrible. Horrible. Caveat though, this is a book one and I have no idea when book two will come out. It's definitely not finished. It's an open ending and I have not yet found any information about when book two is going to come out. But trust me, the moment it is, I will finish this and I want to read how this continues. I think it was supposed to be a bit duology only anyway. All right, what do you think? Did you read any of those already? Do any of those sound interesting to you? And let me know if you like these type of quick and dirty <laughs> reviews and if there's something that I should do more often with other books that I'm reading as well. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the like button and all that fun stuff. And then I hope I see you with my next video. Till then, have an amazing rest of your day.